the user location M n times n will be the set of all n times n matrices. But if, uh, if I have a matrix, right, so U1, U2, you just row by row, okay? So now the first row is the linear combination of two row matrix, U1 and the U1 prime. <coughs> then the determinant, okay, is equal to the linear combination of uh, the matrix. The first row is U1 only, and uh, the second matrix is the U1 prime as the first row only. So we call inherit on the first row, just for the first row. Third.
determinant of So any determinant, any function <coughs> from from the, the the vector space of all n by n matrix to the real number that is five one to three is called the determinant function. So probably. Uh, I use Earth. Okay. And then I will put a remark. You know that, right? In middle high school. 
junior high, not senior high. No? Really? <laughs> Only senior high? Wow. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> really? Okay, maybe I have to check. <laughs> so long. Anyway, so we define we define the terminal term, defined here. And we'll check whether they satisfy these three properties. Or not. So we just define that. Determinant. <coughs> one zero zero one, right? The identity. So it's one times one minus zero times zero, so it's one. Good. So identity one. One. Second. Generic, right? So uh, terminant. First row, right? So now I have uh, say uh, alpha a, right? Plus beta a prime, alpha b plus beta b prime, and it's cp. Now by by definition, this is alpha a plus beta a prime times d minus alpha b plus beta b prime times c. Okay? Now I collect alpha here. So a d minus b c. Okay? Plus beta here. a prime b minus b prime c. And uh, this is what? This is alpha determinant of A, B, C, D plus B determinant of oh. <laughs> Okay. You can see that if we change the rows, then we change the sum. Okay, so what? So now the, the traditional definition of uh, determinants satisfy one to three. So there exists uh, one determinant function for two by two matrices. Because by construction, <laughs> we, we, we construct right, and justify them. So that's fine. But we don't know whether we we have other definition such that uh, we have one to three. Means that is this is unique. And uh, in high school, well, 
the teacher. He then tell you, right, whether it's unique or not. But I think you support that is unique, right? <laughs> Here today. Okay. Now we are going to show, yeah, that's the fact. There is only one. Right? So this definition is unique. There's no other choice for any function called determinants. Any questions? What? And uh, I know you know the formula for three times three matrices, right? You know how to expand it. And, uh, and uh, I encourage you to check at home. It says it's by one two. Okay, but it's more complicated, right? It's more complicated. So, alright, so I will not do it here. Right. So now, now before I can prove that there's one and only one uh, determinant functions, I will put some consequences of, uh, of any determinant function, okay. starting from 1 to 3. Okay? Right, so I will erase the definition. When you look at the, the matrix and you identify that there are two rows. There are two rows and, and these two rows are equal. If you look at them, then the determinants. Well, in in the in two by two, if you know these two rows are equal, then you immediately write the determinants is zero, right? In high school. And this is generally true. Now, so I have to give a proof. Determinant of U1 that, that, that. So this is maybe the ice row. Thank you. 
here it is ten.
So we have linearity on any row. Because the second property in the definition of determining function is that we have linearity on the first row, right? But actually, we have linearity on any row. But, in terminus, so if we want to compute in one sentence, that alpha u i plus beta u i prime, that, that, that. First of all, you exchange the first row and the ice row. So you put the minus sign. Uh,
So when you do a, a replacement on a matrix, then it's determined is equal to the original uh, determinants of the matrix. And the proof. This is the operation. And then linearity on the ice row. So this is the ice row. So we just prove the linearity on any row, right? So, so we have the determinant. So this is the original matrix, plus alpha determinant. U1, that, that, that. U2, that, that, that. U3, that, that, that. U N. Now you have them. Finality 
on any route, right? You got plenty of memory insert here. So to do a scaling, it's the same as you multiply up the, the result, the resulting matrix is determined which is equal to the scale alpha times the determinant of the original matrix. Okay? Now I, I forgot. But it's the property number already, right? You can, you can see my short memory. <laughs> Even though I just write it down here, but I, I, not, I can't remember. Probably this is the fifth one, right? Yeah. So I, I, I call this project by name. It is much more easier for me to remember. Alright, so. So this is the, the seventh property. Scaling. I have to give you a, a, a warning. The determinant of C A. What is that? You multiply a matrix A and by matrix by a constant C. What is the determinant of that? Okay, I, I, I ask you to prove it, alright? But, so, you say one on one. Remember, it's not a raw operation. You multiply C to every row of A. <laughs> right? Okay. So repeat, you have used the scaling operation for n times to get C to n power. Okay? So you have to be careful. This one. Zero row. Determinant in one, in zero, and if you find the matrix is a zero row, then the determinant must be zero. Why? Because if you have zero rows, then zero row is zero times the zero row, right? Zero is a scalar, so you put the zero outside of the determinant function. So zero times any real number is zero. Okay. So it's just a price scaling no okay. Okay. Right, So the proof by seven. Okay? Zero means that this is upper triangular. So the lower all parts has all zero entrances. And the upper part, the x means arbitrary. <laughs> you can assign arbitrary entrances here. So zero. And also for 
lower triangular membrane. So you can write down the determinants of triangular matrix immediately just by multiplying all the diagonal entries. So you can write. Now we can eliminate, right? So uh, the determinant of um, for example. And whenever we do the replacement operations on the matrix, when we do, then we will not uh, change the determine the value, right? By the replacement of operation property. So that, and, and so for example, because all the entries, the diagonal entries are non-zero. So we start with A and N. So we start with A and N and move up to cancel all the entries here, right? So, so you can see that. So this is determinants.
zero is zero. Okay. So we, we eliminate by by replacement on that one. But when we do all the replacement, then it will not change the term. So they have the same term. Is that okay for you? The last row, all the entries, except the last one, they are all zeros. So when you multiply something to add up to the upper row, it will not change the entries here. Okay? It will not change the entries here. The only thing you can cancel, right? You can eliminate all the entries in the last column by A and N. Do you need me to take an example? Yeah, I suppose you already do that on the chance. So, so this is the same. And, and then, now we finish the last column. Then we do the, the second last column again. Right? To eliminate all the entries above A and minus 1 and minus 1. So finally, we can end up with A11, A22, up to A and then this is 0 to 0. So end up with a diagonal matrix. Okay? Without change the value. Because of we, what we do it is we we do replacement. Operations only. And whenever you do it all, replacement, then you do not change the value of the term. Okay? And the next thing is that by using the scaling operation, all right? So you can think about that. This is A times 1, determinants 1, A to 2. This matrix is just like the, the matrix multiplied and you scale the first row, right? By A11. So by scaling the operation, you have this identity. Now, okay? The scaling the operation. And so similarly, you have A11, A22, up to ANN, and determinant of. One, one, one. Here, zero. And this is the identity matrix. Okay, so you get A11, A22, A11. and you have that. So this is the identity matrix. If all the data entries are non zero, I mean, I like to put X here. I put, uh, sorry, I put this here. And uh, so we can, the, the, the first part is we use the replacement operations right, to turn an upper triangular enter into a diagonal matrix. Or, well, again, if you can do it for the lower triangle matrix. Right? And, uh, but at that time, we just do from the first, first count. Anyway, so when you, you, when you up to a diagonal matrix, then now you use the scaling operation. So that you can pick, pick out, or you can think about by using the linearity, right? There are many, many different ways to, to do it. You can keep, apply the linearity for any, on any row to, to move out all the scalars, and you can get that. So maybe I would say it is simpler than linearity.
So this is case one. Case two. So there is a diagonal entry. So maybe this is zero or this is zero. But anyway, there is one diagonal entry which is zero. Okay. So when we do that, That means that um, um, actually we do so. Um, so we do a lot of uh, um, so. That means that um, a is equal to e one. Maybe I use beta, beta not to be zero. 
and the QI. I'm sorry. I, I have to indicate that the beta is non-zero. When we do the, the raw reduction, Okay. And uh, then you contain a zero result. CK is, is 1. 
you know, by this time, then the, you have put a scale of beta there. And uh, if uh, you, 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 do, you do, do a raw exchange, then you fit minus one. So anyway, so we know this is non zero, okay? Because beta, I say, non zero. So CK, that's to zero. And so you, we can do that, right? One by one. So finally, you have CK, C, da, 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 C2 and C1 can be terminated. Okay. Is that right? So, so from here, I do that by the properties of the determinants. But we know you has contained a zero row. So what is the determinant? It's zero. So zero is C case are non zero and then times with dependent A. So that dependent A must be zero, right? So this implies that dependent A is zero. And uh, this is A by one, A to zero, up to A and N. And we're done. If one of the diagonal entries is zero, so this product must be zero. And then we establish the identity. Right. Any questions? So again, we go back to our law operations, right? Go back to chapter one. Chapter one always the foundation. Okay? We always go back to chapter one, chapter one. Even, even when we discuss the last chapter. Sometimes we'll go back to chapter one. Any questions? Great. So, so we know uh, how to compute the determinants of a triangular matrix. Very easy, right? So this is, what is the number? What's the number? Nine? Eight? Nine. Nine, okay. So next one is ten. I give the name, okay? So the ten is that um, invertible matrix. Right? So we, we have already dealt with the, the um, Triangle matrices. Now the the, the tenth property is that determinant of A not equal to zero. If and only A is invertible. True. So it's a property. So determinant A, so if A is invertible, then determinant B not, should be non zero. Conversely, if we know that the determinants of a square matrix is non zero, then A is true. Okay, so let U be the so we reduce the actual. Because this is P. 
stem and P. This is the stem and Q. Okay. So we want to prove P implies Q. But P implies is equivalent to So we will use contrapositive standard. What is negative Q? Negative Q means that A is, so suppose, but now we suppose, A is not invertible. Then, U has a zero draw. You know that already, right? The last from chapter three. If A is not invertible, then U has a zero group. Okay? So this implies determinant of U is zero. But Determinant of A is something C times determinant of U. Okay? From here. By the operation, right? With C not equal to zero. So this is zero. Okay? A contradiction. Because we assume determine A non zero. So, so not Q implies not P. So we prove that it's up. Any question about this one? Because I already used the knowledge we got from this proof. This is general, right? Um, when you is the row reduce H1 form of a matrix, then you actually is like this one. We have prior operations on A. So, so eventually that we have uh, Determine A is equal to a constant times term C. And the constant C is non zero. Just by applying you know, the operations. And we have done here already. So we have that. And uh, if so so suppose A is non invertible, then you the the because the original has a zero growth. So the term of you must be zero. Okay. But determinant A is some constant times term U. Okay? And then this constant C is non zero. Anyway. So but this is zero. Zero times C is zero. And a contradiction to this. So A is invertible.
Because of the real question, you know. And I, I always use this relationship. So, and this is alpha, determinant of identity, and this is alpha. So this is not the real plan. This is right. So we prove the prompt to 10. Any questions? Elementary matrices determinant of E I J alpha one determinant of S I alpha equal to alpha determinant of E I J alpha. You see that is that's easy, right? Do you, do you need me to put that? For, for, for this replacement, elementary matrix, that, uh, um,
Herz. Determinant of AB equal to a determinant of A and So if you have two n by n matrices AB, then the determinants of their product is equal to the product of their determinants. Before that, uh, to go to a proof, uh, I think I give uh, a lemma. So I give a lemma. Okay. Um, for Q and times and matrices.
So now we prove prove law. Yeah. And so we want to prove the cut. Go back to the proof. Okay, so cut. So we can see the case part. A is not conventional. So now then A B is not in the Right? Because if A B is invertible, then A must be invertible. <laughs> so it's a contradiction. So we have that. So we have determinant A equal to zero and determinant of A B. Because of uh, property limit, right? No, no, 10. 10, yeah. Right, 10. And what that why? Because determine the AB is 0, and it's equal to the 0 times determinant of B, and this is determinant of A. And we have established the identity right, for the case. So if A is not invertible, then of course the identity is true because the value for both side has value zero. It's easy, right? Okay? Any questions? So our lemma is so useful. Because <laughs> once we have the lemma, we immediately deal with this case. Actually, we have uh, uh, already uh, this special 
uh, cases already. Why? Because what is that? Maybe I I don't need to. Uh, I guess there's a reason. Um, by what is the replacement from the and six? The replacement operation. Six. Yeah, thank you. And uh, what is the value of determinants of the, this elementary matrix? Uh, no? 11 or 10? Eleven, thank you. Good. And the scaling is seven and eleven. And uh, for the what is ten? And we're done. So actually, uh, combined with six and eleven, actually you already get this simple formula. I, I can use this fact in the proof, but I think maybe I put this as a lemma. It's easier for you to know the structure. So this actually uh, we have already. Uh, cases for this from Okay? So, so we, we have that. Okay, this lemma. It's, maybe you can think about the lemma as a summary. Alright, so we put something into this formula. Right, so now we propose to go to case two. Okay, uh, okay so how to write again? So um, the reduced row oh A is A is invertible. Okay. Um, so, um, the uh, reduce no extra form for A is identity and uh, and uh, um, and that E one. We have uh, E K, E two, E one, A, E four, E five. Okay. I have a sequence of elementary matrices of types uh, E I J, Alpha. SI, beta, beta, like the zero, and the PI. Okay, so, so now we apply, we can apply uh, the operations, elementary operations on A and T to the identity. Because that uh, identity is the reduced relation form of any invertible matrix. So we got that. Okay, now we apply the same sequence. Okay. And, and this is what? Okay, so we have two identities, right? Two and now I apply the determinant function for that. So determinant of EK
now I apply all this. So this is equal to, but this is go before this point, it's going to decay. So we can factor out the, because the E sub i's are any of the types of these three types. So we can do so. So for finally, we have determinant of dk, determinant of <laughs> determinant of d one, d two, determinant of d one. Okay. So, so that we have to go to what? Here and here, we immediately get out of the box. Here, this fundamental part we can prove by using the law operations. We go back to chapter one and to see the linkage.
I already discussed a lot of properties of determinants. But um, now we can go to. Um, so, what I want to do um, in this section is show you the explaining formula. Alright, so let's do something. Determinant. And we will show this is 
can be true for m and by m. This is the one of the main purpose of this section. Okay, so I will start here. I actually I, I delayed. I I supposed to finish chapter four today. <laughs> Because I, I love my schedule, I find. Because last week I spent some time for the long list of the vertebral. So actually, I have duty to start this determinant. I forgot. I hope. <laughs> it's my mistake. Now I have to, I have, I have to think of a way to speed up 